reckon that's what we've been waiting for. And right on schedule. It's almost too easy. Oh, he doesn't have any British troops escorting him. Since the British control every foot of this territory around here, I reckon it... Show me. Yeah. Well, that's something we didn't count on. We are the British. <laughs> Jehosaphat, fat. That newfangled rifle, he's got three times faster than a musket. And there are 200 more of them in that wagon. Shawnees must think they've tangled with a magician. Major. I wouldn't do that, Major. I don't want to have to shoot you. Don't be alarmed, Major Richardson. I'm not a Shawnee. You, you know my name? Major John Richardson, soldier, inventor, just arrived from London. With this extraordinary weapon, very possibly turn the tide of the revolution in favor of the British. It will, I assure you. Not as long as we have you, Major, and that rifle. And as for your generals, well, that's just an experiment. No more of them can be made without you. Oh, we have excellent sources of information. Yes, spies. Patriots, Major. The revolution has friends everywhere, even some in high places in England. Thanks to them, we know that you've only manufactured 200 of these. We know when they were shipped from England. We know that they're all in this wagon. <laughs> Ain't that neat? We got the Major and the wagon. Except for just one thing. There's not a single rifle in that wagon. You were saying? What else do you know? You said it seemed too easy, Daniel. Those rifles are where they'll do what they were designed to do. To kill so many of you rebels that you'll be forced to abandon this foolish insurrection. My rifles, gentlemen, are in British hands. <laughs> Your little adventure has failed. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe, the red redest, roaringest, fightingest man the frontier ever knew. Oh, Daniel Boone was a man, just a big man, with an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Oh, Daniel Boone was a man, just a big man, and he fought for America to make all Americans free. Daniel Boone was a doer, what a dream come a truer was he. Daniel Boone, Daniel Boone. I never saw so much foolish stuff for a soldier to be carrying. He must have ten uniforms, boots, all kinds of reading books, silver eating tools, white tablecloths, Major Richardson is a British gentleman first, Jeremiah, and a soldier second. His inventions have made him a rich man, and he's learned to live like one. He's got some kind of a machine in there. Looks like it for fixing guns. You know, the fact that he's heading for those rifles must mean our information about date of arrival and port of delivery is wrong. We British are not bested so easily by your friends in high office. 
You see, we arranged for false information to be circulated, anticipating just such a contingency as this. Where are the rifles, Daniel? Well, according to this, they're due to be delivered in Salem and then on to Fort Stiles. Fort Stiles has only a small garrison, a few dozen men. Well, according to this, 200 hand-picked riflemen are en route there to train and serve under Major Richardson. Prove the rifles under battle conditions. I think that's the idea. Rather frustrating, isn't it, Mr. Boone? Those rifles won't do them much good without you, Major. My dear man, the whole British Army doesn't cease to function if one officer disappears. Anyway, anyone can learn to fire a breech loader, even mine. In any case, I'm of no value to you without my rifles. I think he's got a point, Mingo. Well, you ain't gonna let him go, Dan. Not exactly. The Major arrived at the port of Boston less than a week ago, and he's never been here before. That's correct. What about it? He's due to report to Fort Stiles. Now, chances are no one there knows what he looks like. Mr. Boone, surely you're not thinking of trying to pass someone else off as me? I am thinking about it, considering the stakes. Well, they may not know my face, but my reputation is well established. Anyway, where could you possibly find anyone in this wilderness to impersonate an educated British officer and gentleman of breeding and culture? Right here. This savage? Well, this savage, Major, is a graduate of Oxford. And as for your reputation, you may have difficulty living up to it once Mingo is impersonated. You know, now, let's get out of this opening. We've got some work to do. But I Mingo, go! You don't actually believe he can learn in a matter of hours the skills of a lifetime, do you? I think he can learn well enough, Major, to fool anybody but you, and since you won't be there to call him on. Done! First rate, Mingo. Now let's work on fire. Uh -huh. than you, Daniel. Speed's important, Mingo. It's not worth a hoot without accuracy. All right, fire at the same speed. weapon. Yes, sir, Major. Your rifle in the hands of 200 Kentuckians, well, they'd be the equal of a thousand of the Crown's finest. Well, you're getting a little ahead of yourself, Mr. Boone. Even if he is accepted as me, how do you plan to get those rifles out of Fort Stiles? Well, that's a good question. I wish I had the answer. <laughs> By golly, men go at Sucha. Well, it suits my father's English blood, but my mother's Cherokee blood is on the war path over the scalping you gave me. Well, the Herald will back. Yes, if my head is still connected to my neck when this is over. Well, there's no call to fret about that. I understand spies are shot and not beheaded. I can't tell you how that reassures me, Daniel. By the way, how am I to contact you when I've arranged everything? You're orderly. Orderly. 
Jeremiah. Well, you reckon I'll pass for an Englishman? You will if there's a place in England called Kentuck. Huh? From now on, you're going to develop a sudden case of sore throat. Sore throat? The minute he enters that fort, he's going to go mute. Is he trying to tell me I talk funny? Oh, he meant no offense, Jeremiah. It's just that you speak a little peculiarly for a British red coat. Uh, Daniel, do you uh, intend to remain camped here? Mm -hmm. Aren't we a bit close to Fort Stiles? I know that. But it shouldn't take you too long to figure a way to get those rifles out. The Major's wagon should come in handy. You can get word to me by Jeremiah, hopefully by morning. There's now to be redcoats swarming all over this place come daylight. There may even be patrols through the night. Major, I'm going to have to ask you to change your uniform. I will not, sir. Well, either you take those clothes off or Mango and I are going to help you. Jeremiah's clothes should fit you just fine. Those filthy buckskins. Impossible. Well, now, Major, a bound and gag prisoner in buckskin would look a lot more natural to a British patrol than a trussed-up gentleman shivering in his drawers. British officer and wagon approaching the gates. Major Richardson. Colonel. I insist that you inspect my papers, Colonel. Yes, of course, but I have been expecting you, and there are several... Well, then I presume that my quarters are ready. Yes, but I thought we'd have a little talk first. Oh, where are they? Well, you're in the same building with me. Our offices, dining room and so on, are in headquarters building. Yes, well, that should be satisfactory. Uh, quarter my horse, won't you, please? Take my personal effects to my quarters. Now... Please, Colonel, I should like to inspect my shipment of rifles. Uh, where are you keeping them? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I received notification early this morning that there was a storm at sea. The ship has been delayed. It's not expected to dock in Salem until late tomorrow. Yes, well, that is uh, a disappointment, isn't it? Then I assume that you have... Uh, Provided a suitable place to store the rifles when they do arrive. Oh, yes, I've made room in the arsenal. They'll be quite safe there, locked up tight. But I do have a pleasant surprise for you, Major, to offset your disappointment. Oh? Yes, your 200 riflemen on their way here will arrive under the command of Captain Halstead. Uh, Captain Halstead? Barnaby Halstead. I understand your old school chums. Oh, you mean that, Captain? Of course, Captain Halstead. <laughs> Yes, well, delightful. <laughs> Come along. Oh. I reckon you're used to something fancier, but your apps how to make this taste pretty good. I shall take extreme personal pleasure in attending your execution, Mr. Boone. You like to count your chickens, don't you, Major? You'll never get those rifles out of British Hill territory. Even if your Indian friend does succeed in fooling the Commandant at Fort Stiles. Why don't you kill me, Mr. Boone? If you're entertaining an idea of somehow using me to aid you with your flight... Eat it. It tastes better while it's hot. I never claimed to be much of a cook, but it is nourishing. What is it? Be quiet. Be quiet. Why should I? Oh, yeah! You 
or something? That I did. Like someone shouting for help. Seen it come from that direction. Right. This way. so glad to see a British uniform in all my life. That's so. See, some rebels, they made me prisoner. And who might you be? Oh, the clothes. I'm Major Richardson, Corporal. Major John Richardson. Some, some rebels captured me. But if you'll be good enough to untie me... Yeah, I'll untie your legs, all right. <laughs> so you can march at the point of my musket. You're making a terrible mistake, Corporal. Well, one of us surely is, mister. Major John Richardson arrived at Fort Stiles an hour ago. Fool, that man is an imposter! Well, that's for the Colonel to decide, not me. Now march, mister. All this finery, Major, is bad for my morale. Makes me feel a bit homesick. Well, the truly civilized man carries his civilization with him. I, for one, should find it uh, unbearable to have to live for very long as the primitives in this country do. Well, then I must apologize for the plain fare my orderly prepared for your palate. No, no, no. I'm quite well aware of the difficulties in finding a proper cook once one leaves England. Which is precisely why I found it necessary to bring Chester here as my orderly. Not only is he an excellent soldier, but an accomplished chef as well. Isn't that so, Chester? Well, perhaps you'd better not try to speak. Your vocal cords will never heal. As soon as we're settled in, I'm sure that Chester will take great pleasure in delighting you with his skills in the kitchen. Hmm. What exactly happened to his voice? Uh, dust along the trail, I expect. Inflammation of the throat. Chester, you see, is accustomed to the more salubrious climate of our homeland. And his health, I fear, is rather delicate. Corporal Watkins and patrol. Open up. Sir, there's uh, something that requires your attention. Yes, what is it, Corporal? Well, it's urgent, sir. Well, speak up, then. Uh, well, I don't think you'd want to bother Major Richardson, sir. Well, I'm sure it can wait till I finish my coffee. Well, I suppose it can, sir, but I thought you might like to attend to it now. I mean, just in case there's something to it. Not that all I think there is. All right, I'm... Corporal, all right. Anything to stop your babbling. Excuse me, Major, this will only take a moment, I'm sure. suppose that was all about? I don't know. But why do you keep telling him I'm such a good cook? I was playing a part, Jeremiah. Overplaying your hand is more like it. The way you talk to him, he's a colonel, you're a major. But you've seen the major. You know his reputation. He'd be arrogant before the king. Maybe. But if I do any cooking for him, you're going to have a sick colonel on your hands. Well, that might not be such a bad idea. Look, we've got to get word to Daniel. Tell him that the rifles won't be arriving until late tomorrow and that a friend of the major's is due here. I can't just walk out of this fort. No, I guess you can't. But you are supposed to be a master chef. And a master chef uses rare herbs and spices that grow in the woods. I wouldn't know an herb if I fell on one. Well, most people wouldn't. Well, you can't speak, so I'll give you a note to show the guard at the gate. After you've talked to Daniel, pick some weeds to take back with you. 
You people are ingenious. You know, your story is so ridiculous, I'm almost inclined to give it some credence. Well, why do you suppose I was tied up? And why did I shout for help? Well, certainly the corporal told oh, you that... you have to do better than that. Anyone can tie a rope around his legs and shout for help. The corporal surely told you there was another man there, the one they followed. Yes, at last. Your accomplice in trying to convince us of this nonsensical story. For what reason? Well, probably to get your hands on those rifles, I expect. The rifles? Yes, the rifles. That imposter brought one with him, didn't he? Well, look, I can describe it to you. Yes, prove to you that I know it as only the inventor could. Major Richardson has already done that. Major Richardson? I know you people have friends in London, and I'm sure they've given you all sorts of information about Major Richardson and his rifle. There's one thing they can't help you with. Major Richardson is a born and bred Englishman. There's no doubt about that. You fool. He, he's an Indian. Oh, you are amusing. You mean he's one of those savages? Yes, yes. He's an Indian. He just happens to have graduated from Oxford. <laughs> it gets better and better. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's orderly. He told you the man had a sore throat, didn't he? Well, that's because he's a Kentuckian. Yes, one word out of his mouth and you'd know something was wrong. Well, you'll have a chance to prove who you are or aren't. How? In the next day or so, an officer will be arriving here, a man who's known John Richardson all his life. What officer? A Captain Halstead. Barnaby Halstead? Perfect. Well, your friends have done a complete job, haven't they? That will settle this, won't it? And I'm afraid, Colonel, that when it does, I shall be forced to send a report on this entire matter to London. It's one thing to be cautious. But it's something else altogether to be an out and out simpleton. Take this man to the detention cell, keep a close guard on him. Corporal. Sir? He's either the most arrogant spy who ever lived or the most obnoxious British officer I've ever met. Corporal, I want. A constant and close watch kept on Major Richardson and his orderly. But I don't want them to know they're being watched. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Well, it appears to me that the longer we keep up this play acting, the more apt we are to stick our foot in our mouth. Now, if them rifles don't get here pretty soon, Forgive me, Major, just some minor administrative detail. Being a fort commandant can be a bore at times. I dare say. Oh dear, your coffee must be frigid. A Chester, if you were more hot coffee for the McCoy. No, no, thank you. I've had quite sufficient. Chester, how long have you been with the Major? Oh, poor chap. That throat must be as raw as fresh cut beef. Uh, two years, Colonel. He was assigned to me directly after I received my commission. <sighs> and now, if you'll forgive me, Colonel, I am a bit tired after a long ride, and I do want to be fresh in the morning. There's much work to be done. You'll excuse me. Uh, you can tend the table later, Chester. I'll need you to help me in unpacking. Uh, good night, Colonel. Good night. I broke my toe. You were going to answer the colonel, weren't you? Why, he's sneaky. That's because he's beginning to suspect we're not all we're pretending to be. I don't know why, but we're going to have to be doubly careful from now on. Yeah, I should pass you through the gate. I'll tell Daniel about the delay in the rifles and so forth. You're sure you can find him? Look, I may not be much of an orderly, but I ain't no oaf.
Him. Track him by moonlight's well now impossible without cat's eyes. say anything to Mingo about Richardson. And the fact that he's got them red coats on me. Oh, he's got his wind up all right. Are you sure you've got them off my trail? Those rifles weren't so fired important. I'd say you and Mingo ought to get out of there right away any way you can. You know something? I think Mingo's enjoying that play acting so much, he wouldn't leave unless you drug him out of there. Dad, have you got a way figure to get them rifles out of there once they get them in there? No. You say those rifles are due to arrive tomorrow afternoon? Well, that's what the colonel said. And the major's friend, Captain Halstead? That's tomorrow night or the next day. We still have some time left. If, if everything goes according to schedule. And so far, it ain't. We've got to prove to the colonel that Mingo is Richardson beyond a doubt. That's impossible, ain't it? Yeah, I'm beginning to think so. Look, you better get on back and don't come out again. We can't afford to make that fellow any more suspicious than he is. Almost forgot. Mm -hmm. What's that? Herbs. What? Herbs and spices. That's what I'm out here for. I'm supposed to bring some back. Weeds will do just fine. Give me an idea for your throat. an emergency or unless the rifles have arrived. By the way, you might let the Redcoats pick up your trail and follow you on that way. You'll seem perfectly innocent. You know what? I gotta hand it to you. You think of everything. Form a double rank. Sergeant, open them up. Well, this must be a big moment for you, eh, Major? Yes, it is, indeed. Sergeant! Through that axe. See, Colonel, I want to be absolutely certain that the rifles weathered the sea voyage successfully. Colonel, this is the weapon that's going to bring a quick end to the fighting. Yes, I believe it might. If it's all you say it is. Oh, it is. It is indeed, and more, I assure you. I don't suppose you'd care to give us a demonstration, would you? A demonstration? What do you mean, right now? Yes, right now. Why not? Yes, indeed. <coughs> Why not? Corporal. Sir. Arrange a target for the Major, will you? Sir. How do you want me to fire the rifle, Colonel? Standing, kneeling prone, or on the move? On the move? Yes, you see, that's one of the distinct advantages of the Richardson rifle. Well, the choice is yours. Yeah, very well, Colonel. <clears throat>
impressive demonstration, Major. Thank you, Colonel. <laughs> that Colonel was so cocksure that he was walking you right into a trap with that rifle, and all the time you was planning to walk him right into his own trap. <laughs> Oh, it warms the cockles, Mingo. I do say. Well, the important thing is he's just about convinced that I really am Major Richardson. That should give us a little more freedom to work something out. Now, if nothing else happens to arouse his suspicions, we might be able to... Major Richardson. I have a really extraordinary surprise for you. Oh, out with it. Uh, you'd better put your tunic back on. Don't tell me Barnaby Halstead has arrived already. No, 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 no. no. I, I said a surprise. Oh, what could possibly happen in the middle of the afternoon in a frontier fort that would require my being formally attired? The arrival of a member of the fair sex. And I do mean fair, Major. You ought to be congratulated. She is a beauty. She... Yes, her boat docked in Yorktown yesterday. All the way from Liverpool, just to surprise you on your birthday. And she's in the sitting room, waiting for you right now. <laughs> well, can't you guess, ma'am? Miss Ellen Courtney, your fiancé. Miss Courtney. That's hardly the look of a man who hasn't seen his betrothed for a long time. A surprise, Colonel. Merely surprised that she'd come all the way to this wilderness. John, darling, how wonderful to see you. My dear, my dear, how can I ever tell you how happy I am? <laughs> You almost scared me out of ten years' growth. <laughs> Poor dear. The shock of seeing me is very nearly undone. Oh, very nearly. <laughs> well, I'm sure you two don't need me around. We'll see you at dinner, I hope, Miss Courtney. Surely. And she's brought a real surprise with her, too. Oh, Chester, uh, Sergeant Miller, who brought in the rifles, has potions and ointments for all sorts of ailments, and he knows a bit about medicine, too. I told him about your throat. He's waiting in the North Barracks to have a look at it now. Rebecca Boone, what in the name of heaven are you doing here? Well, convincing the Colonel that you're Major Richardson, for one thing. You've done a fair job of that, but don't you know the British shoot spies? Oh, I don't think the British would execute a woman. But I don't think they'd hesitate to shoot you and Jeremiah. <laughs> mm. Yes, and if that Sergeant Miller knows anything at all about medicine, we're right back where we started. Oh, no, 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 Dan will solve that. I'm on fire! I am burning up! Good, now's a fine time to show your throat to the sergeant. Mingo, hmm? Dan says it's going to be impossible to get those rifles out of here. Yes, with that Captain Halstead and 200 British soldiers do here any moment, he's probably right. But he does have a plan for the rifles and the Major. Uh, speaking of Daniel... The surprise the Colonel mentioned. Come, my darling. things from your flat in London. You couldn't bring them when you came. Since we're going to be married, I thought... Yes, I know, but where's Daniel? You mean... <laughs> it's a bit cramped, but he'll be coming out after dark. You said he agrees we can't get the rifles out. What is all this? 
Well, he doesn't want the British to have them either. And as long as they have Major Richardson, they can manufacture more. Yes, but what are we supposed to do? Of course, darling, we'll have to buy more things. But you'd be surprised what? how comfy it'll be when I get it all fixed up. Yeah. Colonel, can't men be difficult? Forgive me for interrupting. But I've just come from the barracks, Major. And that orderly of yours has a fierce-looking throat. However, Sergeant Biller tells me that he has a swab. He's sure we'll clear it up in no time. He assures me that Chester will be having his voice back in a matter of hours. Oh, I am glad to hear that. Major, I didn't break in like this to tell you that. Not principally, anyway. Well, uh, what is it, Colonel? I want to apologize. I've been keeping something from you out of, well, mistrust is the only word, I suppose. Mistrust, Colonel? Of me? Yes. We captured a fellow, a very convincing talker, obviously a rebel spy who told a wild story and claimed that he was you, and that you were an imposter. But surely you didn't believe him? Oh, no. A at least not at first. But he knew so much about you, about your rifle. He even knew Captain Halstead's first name. <laughs> and see that. It only goes to show how devious these colonials can really be. The audacity of the man. Well, that didn't really convince me. But when he said that your orderly had a sore throat, or at least was feigning a sore throat, <laughs> well, I see, of course. He was spying on us on the trail. You were perfectly right, Colonel. We must all be vigilant, constantly. You're very generous, Major. Not at all. Colonel, what will happen to the man? The spy? Well, he'll face a firing squad. When? Dawn tomorrow. Well, that's all right. Pardon? I mean, I'll be back in my room at the hotel in Salem. I wouldn't want to see. Of course. Well, dinner, then? Of course. Hmm? Uh, I almost forgot the best part. He insisted that you were an Indian. An Indian? I? An <laughs> Indian? <laughs> yes. Fancy that. That is amusing. An Indian? I? An Indian. Daniel, you missed your calling. You were born to have been a master spy. Disturbing you, Colonel. Oh, not at all, Major, not at all. Do come in. Since he's to be executed in the morning, I should like to question that fellow who claims to be me. I think we should do everything we can to find out where, how, and how much the rebels have learned concerning our plans for the Richardson rifle. Well, I doubt he'll talk, but it's certainly worth the effort. Matter of fact, I'd like to be part of it. Excellent, Colonel. <laughs> I didn't realize you were still here. John will drive me to my hotel in Salem shortly. Uh, don't you think it would be better if Miss Courtney were not here when we question? You're probably right, Colonel. You best wait upstairs, my dear. This may prove to be somewhat uh, unpleasant. Come in. Fellow who claims.
claims to be Major John Richardson. Meet your fiance, Major. So, you compound the crime. She's an imposter also. I see. You've decided to continue this ridiculous fiction to the end. You see nothing, Colonel, because you're a blind and thoroughgoing fool. Which you will learn to your sorrow when Captain Halstead arrives. In that case, you'd better pray that Captain Halstead arrives before dawn, hadn't you? My dear. Now, look here. Don't you think you've gone far enough with this masquerade? <laughs> I'm Captain Halstead, Corporal. Uh, yes, sir, the Colonel's expecting you, but uh, the troops, sir, we thought you were coming with them. Uh, I bivouacked half a mile down the road. Well, I'll tell the Colonel you're here, sir. Don't you see how pointless this is? Now, I can't promise you clemency, of course, but if you'll tell us... Come in. Oh, sir, Captain Halstead's arrived. Uh, ah, well, show the Captain in, Corporal. Yes, sir. Are you going to tell us that Captain Halstead also is an imposter? John, what in the world are you doing in those clothes? Behind you, Barnaby! Oh. Captain, if you join the Major there, I prefer not to shoot you, Colonel. At last. At last you can see with your own eyes what a, what a fool you've been. Rebecca! See that Major Richardson doesn't move while we take care of them. You must think you're pretty clever. Well, you're not clever enough to get out of here alive. <laughs> we'll do the best we can, Colonel, I assure you. Now, if you'll turn that chair around. Sit down and put your hands behind your back. Be grateful, Major. Least wise, you ain't gonna be shot at sunrise for spy. Meet you at the wagon, Jeremiah. Are you ready, Rebecca? Yes. Remember, casually now. Good evening, Corporal. Uh, uh, sir, shall I uh, stable the captain's horse or shall I leave him here? Captain Halstead will be a while. He's uh, tied up with the Colonel. Thanks, sir. Nice night for a ride, sir. 
Yes, isn't it, Corporal? Uh, will you be coming back from Salem tonight, sir? As a matter of fact, we won't. We are in a hurry, Corporal. Corporal of the Guard! Corporal of the Guard! Stop those people! your hair short but perhaps i could shape it a little more you do and my mother will come down from the happy hunting ground and haunt you <laughs> coffee jeremiah mm, thank Careful, you, it's hot. no chance of getting that major richard to make some of them rifles for us is it down he's a stubborn man and a proud one he's refused money freedom and a commission in the continental army can't help but admire him in fact well one thing for sure them rifles ain't gonna do nobody any good in this fight. Or any harm, either. Well, we bought time, and time is in our favor. Mm. Rebecca Boone, you're an amazing woman. Wife, mother, spy. Hmm? Most important thing. Cook, that's what she does the best. Well, now, I'm not so sure that Rebecca will regard that as a compliment just now, uh, Jeremiah. Hmm? Well, for one thing, we never would have escaped alive from that fort without her. And never mind destroying the rifles. That makes her a heroine of the revolution. A little more exciting than being a frontier woman. And for another thing, I think she rather enjoyed playing the part of a British lady. Is that a fact, Becky? Well, I surely did hate giving those lovely clothes back to Mrs. Devery. Speaking of clothes, I lost a perfectly good set of buckskins that Major Richardson. Well, now, don't you worry about Jeremiah. We'll shoot you another set. And Becky will stitch him up for you, won't you, Becky? <sighs> Back to the frontier. More pie, Jeremiah? I don't mind if I do. Come in. 
Forgive me for disturbing you, Colonel. Oh, not at all, Major, not at all. Do come in. Since he's to be executed in the morning, I should like to question that fellow who claims to be me. I think we should do everything we can to find out where, how, and how much the rebels have learned concerning our plans for the Richardson rifle. Well, I doubt he'll talk, but it's certainly worth the effort. Matter of fact, I'd like to be part of it. Excellent, Colonel. <laughs> I didn't realize you were still here. John will drive me to my hotel in Salem shortly. Uh, don't you think it would be better if Miss Courtney were not here when we question? You're probably right, Colonel. You'd best wait upstairs, my dear. This may prove to be somewhat uh, unpleasant. Come in. So, this is the fellow who claims to be Major John Richardson. Meet your fiancé, Major. So, you compound the crime. She's an imposter also. I see. You've decided to continue this ridiculous fiction to the end. You see nothing, Colonel, because you're a blind and thoroughgoing fool. Which you will learn to your sorrow when Captain Halstead arrives. Well, in that case, you'd better pray that Captain Halstead arrives before dawn, hadn't you? My dear. Now oh, look. On the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The red men is roaring as fighting as man. The frontier ever knew. Oh, Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Oh, Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, a big man. And he fought for America to make all Americans free. Daniel Boone was a doer, what a dream come or truer was he. Daniel Boone, Daniel Boone. I never saw so much foolish stuff for a soldier to be carrying. He must have ten uniforms, boots, all kinds of reading books, Silver eating tools, white tablecloths. Major Richardson is a British gentleman first, Jeremiah, and a soldier second. His inventions have made him a rich man, and he's learned to live like one. He's got some kind of a machine in there. Looks like it for fixing guns. You know, the fact that he's heading for those rifles must mean our information about date of arrival and port of delivery is wrong. We British are not bested so easily by your friends in high office. You see, we arranged for false information to be circulated, anticipating just such a contingency as this. Where are the rifles, Daniel? Well, according to this, they're due to be delivered in Salem, and then on to Fort Stiles. Fort Stiles has only a small garrison, a few dozen men. Well, according to this, 200 hand-picked riflemen are en route there to train and serve under Major Richardson. Oh, to prove the rifles under battle conditions. I think that's the idea. Rather frustrating, isn't it, Mr. Boone? Those rifles won't do them much good without you, Major. My dear man, the whole British Army doesn't cease to function if one officer disappears. Anyway, anyone can learn to fire a breech loader, even mine. In any case, I'm of no value to you without my rifles. I think he's got a point, Mingo. Well, you ain't gonna let him go, Dan. Not exactly. The Major arrived at the port of Boston less than a week ago, and he's never been here before. That's correct. What about it? He's due to report to Fort Stiles. Our chances are no one there knows what he looks like. Mr. Boone, surely you're not thinking of trying to pass someone else off as me? I am thinking about it, considering the stakes. Well, they may not know my face, but my reputation is well established. Anyway, where could you possibly find anyone in this wilderness to impersonate an educated British officer and gentleman of breeding and culture? Right here. Forgive me for interrupting. But I've just come from the barracks, Major, and that orderly of yours has a fierce-looking throat. However, Sergeant Biller tells me that he has a swab. He's sure we'll clear it up in no time. He... He assures me that Chester will be having his voice back in a matter of hours. 
Oh, I am glad to hear that. Major, I didn't break in like this to tell you that. Not principally, anyway. Well, uh, what is it, Colonel? I want to apologize. I've been keeping something from you out of... Well, mistrust is the only word, I suppose. Mistrust, Colonel? Of me? Yes. We captured a fellow, a very convincing talker. Obviously a rebel spy who told a wild story and claimed that he was you. And that you were an imposter. But surely you didn't believe him? Well, no. A at least not at first. But he knew so much about you, about your rifle. He even knew Captain Halstead's first name. <laughs> and see that. It only goes to show how devious these colonials can really be. The audacity of the man. <laughs> well, that didn't really convince me. But when he said that your orderly had a sore throat, or at least was feigning a sore throat, <laughs> well... I see, of course. He was spying on us on the trail. You're perfectly right, Colonel. We must all be vigilant, constantly. You're very generous, Major. Not at all. Colonel, what will happen to the man? The spy? Well, he'll face a firing squad. When? Dawn tomorrow. Well, that's all right. Pardon? I mean, I'll be back in my room at the hotel in Salem. I wouldn't want to see. Of course. Well, dinner, then. Of course. Hmm? Oh, I almost forgot the best part. He insisted that you were an Indian. An Indian? I? <laughs> an Indian? <laughs> yes. Fancy that. That is amusing. An Indian? I? An Indian. Daniel, you missed your calling. You were born to have been a master spy. stuff for a soldier to be carrying. He must have ten uniforms, boots, all kinds of reading books, silver eating tools, white tablecloths. Major Richardson is a British gentleman first, Jeremiah, and a soldier second. His inventions have made him a rich man, and he's learned to live like one. He's got some kind of a machine in there. Looks like it for fixing guns. You know, the fact that he's heading for those rifles must mean our information about date of arrival and port of delivery is wrong. We British are not bested so easily by your friends in high office. You see, we arranged for false information to be circulated, anticipating just such a contingency as this. Where are the rifles, Daniel? Well, according to this, they're due to be delivered in Salem and then on to Fort Stiles. Fort Stiles has only a small garrison, a few dozen men. According to this, 200 hand-picked riflemen are en route there to train and serve under Major Richardson. Oh, to prove the rifles under battle conditions. I think that's the idea. Rather frustrating, isn't it, Mr. Boone? Those rifles won't do them much good without you, Major. My dear man, the whole British Army doesn't cease to function if one officer disappears. 
Anyway, anyone can learn to fire a breech loader, even mine. In any case, I'm of no value to you without my rifles. I think he's got a point, Mingo. Well, you ain't gonna let him go, Dan. Not exactly. The Major arrived at the port of Boston less than a week ago, and he's never been here before. That's correct. What about it? He's due to report to Fort Stiles. Now, chances are no one there knows what he looks like. Mr. Boone, surely you're not thinking of trying to pass someone else off as me. I am thinking about it, considering the stakes. Well, they may not know my face, but my reputation is well established. Anyway, where could you possibly find anyone in this wilderness to impersonate an educated British officer engine? Me? Yes. We captured a fellow, a very convincing talker. Obviously a rebel spy who told a wild story and claimed that he was you. And that you were an imposter. I sure you didn't believe him. Well, no. A at least not at first. But he knew so much about you, about your rifle. He even knew Captain Halstead's first name. <laughs> and see that. It only goes to show how devious these colonials can really be. The audacity of the man. <laughs> well, that didn't really convince me. But when he said that your orderly had a sore throat, or at least was feigning a sore throat, <laughs> well, I see, of course. He was spying on us on the trail. You were perfectly right, Colonel. We must all be vigilant, constantly. You're very generous, Major. Not at all. Colonel, what will happen to the man? The spy? Well, he'll face a firing squad. When? Dawn tomorrow. Well, that's all right. Pardon? I mean, I'll be back in my room at the hotel in Salem. I wouldn't want to see. Of course. Well, dinner, then. Morris. Oh. Hmm? Uh, I almost forgot the best part. He insisted that you were an Indian. An Indian? I? An Indian? <laughs> yes. Fancy that. That is amusing. An Indian? I? An Indian. Daniel, you missed your calling. You were born to have been a master spy. Disturbing you, Colonel. Oh, not at all, Major, not at all. Do come in. Since he's to be executed in the morning, I should like to question that fellow who claims to be me. Major, I didn't break in like this to tell you that. Not principally, anyway. Well, uh, what is it, Colonel? I want to apologize. I've been keeping something from you out of... Well, mistrust is the only word, I suppose. Mistrust, Colonel? Of me? Yes. We captured a fellow, a very convincing talker. Obviously a rebel spy who told a wild story and claimed that he was you. And that you were an imposter. I sure you didn't believe him. Well, no. A at least not at first. But he knew so much about you, about your rifle. He even knew Captain Halstead's first name. And see that. It only goes to show how devious these colonials can really be. The audacity of the man. Well, that didn't really convince me. But when he said that your orderly had a sore throat, or at least was feigning a sore throat, well, I see, of course. He was spying on us on the trail. 
You're perfectly right, Colonel. We must all be vigilant, constantly. You're very generous, Major. Not at all. Colonel, what will happen to the man? The spy? Well, he'll face a firing squad. When? Dawn tomorrow. Well, that's all right. Pardon? I mean, I'll be back in my room at the hotel in Salem. I wouldn't want to see. Of course. Well, dinner then. Horace. Huh? Oh, I almost forgot the best part. He insisted that you were an Indian. An Indian? I? <laughs> an Indian? <laughs> Fancy that. That is amusing. An Indian? I? An Indian? Daniel, you missed your calling. You were born to have been a master spy. Daniel, it's time. Burn long enough? About a minute and a half. I've tested two of them. Where's Becky? Inside. I'll need about ten minutes and then get him out of here. Right. Are you ready, Daniel? Fire. I never expected to see the day when I could fire more rapidly than you, Daniel. Speed's important, Mingo. It's not worth a hoot without accuracy. speed. weapon. Yes, sir, Major. Your rifle in the hands of 200 Kentuckians, well, they'd be the equal of a thousand of the Crown's finest. Well, you're getting a little ahead of yourself, Mr. Boone. Even if he is accepted as me, how do you plan to get those rifles out of Fort Stiles? Well, that's a good question. I wish I had the answer. <laughs> Well, it suits my father's English blood, but my mother's Cherokee blood is on the war path over the scalping you gave me. Well, the Herald grew back. Yes, if my head is still connected to my neck when this is over. Well, there's no call to fret about that. I understand spied or shot, not beheaded. I can't tell you how that reassures me, Daniel. By the way, how am I to contact you when I've arranged everything? You're orderly. Orderly. Jeremiah. Well, you reckon I'll pass for an Englishman? You will if there's a place in England called Kentuck. Huh? From now on, you're going to develop a sudden case of sore throat. Sore throat? The minute he enters that fort, he's going to go mute. Is he trying to tell me I talk funny? Oh, he meant no offense, Jeremiah. It's just that you speak a little peculiarly for a British red coat. Uh, Daniel. Do you get word to me by Jeremiah, hopefully by morning. There's bound to be redcoats swarming all over this place come daylight. There may even be patrols through the night. Major, I'm going to have to ask you to change your uniform. 
I will not, sir. Well, either you take those clothes off or Mango and I are going to help you. Jeremiah's clothes should fit you just fine. Those filthy buckskins. Impossible. Well, now, Major, a bound and gag prisoner in buckskin would look a lot more natural to a British patrol than a trussed-up gentleman shivering in his drawers. British officer and wagon approaching the gates. Must be Major Richardson. Colonel. I insist that you inspect my papers, Colonel. Yes, of course, but I have been expecting you, and there are several. Well, then I presume that my quarters are ready. Yes, but I thought we'd have a little talk first. Now, where are they? Well, you're in the same building with me. Our offices, dining room, and so on are in headquarters building. Yes. Well, that should be satisfactory. Uh, quarter my horse, won't you, please? Take my personal effects to my quarters. Now. Please, Colonel, I should like to inspect my shipment of rifles. Uh, where are you keeping them? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I received notification early this morning that there was a storm at sea. The ship has been delayed. It's not expected to dock in Salem until late tomorrow. Yes, well, that is uh, a disappointment, isn't it? <laughs> then I assume that you have... Uh provided a suitable place to store the rifles when they do arrive. Oh, yes, I've made room in the arsenal. They'll be quite safe there, locked up tight. But I do have a pleasant surprise for you, Major, to offset your disappointment. Oh? Yes, your 200 riflemen on their way here will arrive under the command of Captain Halstead. Uh, Captain Halstead? Barnaby Halstead. I understand your old school chums. Oh, you mean that, Captain? Of course, Captain Halstead. <laughs> Yes, well, the swab, he's sure will clear it up in no time. He assures me that Chester will be having his voice back in a matter of hours. Oh, I am glad to hear that. Major, I didn't break in like this to tell you that. Not principally, anyway. Well, uh, what is it, Colonel? I want to apologize. I've been keeping something from you out of... Well, mistrust is the only word, I suppose. Mistrust, Colonel? Of me? Yes. We captured a fellow, a very convincing talker. Obviously a rebel spy who told a wild story and claimed that he was you. And that you were an imposter. i sure you didn't believe him. Well, no. A at least not at first. But he knew so much about you, about your rifle. He even knew Captain Halstead's first name. Fancy that. It only goes to show how devious these colonials can really be. The audacity of the man. Well, that didn't really convince me. But when he said that your orderly had a sore throat, or at least was feigning a sore throat, well, I see, of course. He was spying on us on the trail. You're perfectly right, Colonel. We must all be vigilant, constantly. You're very generous, Major. Not at all. Colonel, what will happen to the man? The spy? Well, he'll face a firing squad. When? Dawn tomorrow. Well, that's all right. Pardon? I mean, I'll be back in my room at the hotel in Salem. I wouldn't want to see. Of course. Well, dinner, then. Of course. Huh? Uh, I almost forgot the best part. He insisted that you were an Indian. An Indian? I? <laughs> an Indian? <laughs> yes. Fancy that. That is amusing. An Indian? I? An Indian. Daniel, 
simply missed your calling. You were born to have been a master spy. Target for the Major, will you? Sir. How do you want me to fire the rifle, Colonel? Standing, kneeling prone, or on the move? On the move. Yes, you see, that's one of the distinct advantages of the Richardson rifle. Well, the choice is yours. Yeah, very well, Colonel. <clears throat> demonstration, Major. Thank you, Colonel. <laughs> that Colonel was so cocksure that he was walking you right into a trap with that rifle, and all the time you was planning to walk him right into his own trap. <laughs> oh, it warms the cockles, Mingo. I do say. Well, the important thing is he's just about convinced that I really am Major Richardson. That should give us a little more freedom to work something out. Now, if nothing else happens to arouse his suspicions, we might be able to... Major Richardson. I have a really extraordinary surprise for you. Oh? Well, out with it. Uh, you'd better put your tunic back on. Don't tell me Barnaby Halstead has arrived already. No, 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 no. I, I said a surprise. Oh, well, what could possibly happen in the middle of the afternoon in a frontier fort that would require my being formally attired? The arrival of a member of the fair sex. And I do mean fair, Major. You ought to be congratulated. She is a beauty. She... Yes, her boat docked in Yorktown yesterday. All the way from Liverpool, just to surprise you on your birthday. And she's in the sitting room waiting for you right now. Well, can't you guess, man? Miss Ellen Courtney, your fiance. Hi. You say that fuse will burn for a minute and a half. You sure it'll blow up all those rifles in there? When that gunpowder goes, those that are not blown up will be burned to centers. Are we coming back from Salem tonight, sir? As a matter of fact, we won't. We are in a hurry, Corporal.
mighty good. Thank you, sir. Coffee? Mingo? No, thank you, Rebecca. I think I like your hair short. But perhaps I could shape it a little more. You do, and my mother will come down from the happy hunting ground and haunt you. <laughs> Coffee, Jeremiah? Mm, thank Careful, you, Rebecca. it's hot. No chance of getting that Major Richard to make some of them rifles for us, is it, Dan? He's a stubborn man, and a proud one. He's refused money, freedom, and a commission in the Continental Army. Can't help but admire him, in fact. Well, one thing for sure, them rifles ain't gonna do nobody any good in this fight. Or any harm, either. Well, we bought time, and time is in our favor. Mm. Rebecca Boone, you're an amazing woman. Wife, mother, spy. Hmm? Most important thing. Cook, that's what she does the best. Well, now, I'm not so sure that Rebecca will regard that as a compliment just now, uh, Jeremiah. Hmm? Well, for one thing, we never would have escaped.